Hello everyone! Welcome back to Spiritual Essence. I uh, hope you all are doing well. Um, and uh, this video is about something that I have seen a lot of and I really want to help people get a clear message from this. So, I've seen people and I, believe me, I've dealt with people before uh, because as I said in some of my previous videos that I've I've dealt with spiritual problems that people had and ghosts and spirits that people had to deal with of a negative nature. And something that a lot of people do is they'll take items of their faith. Such as, you know, say someone's of the Christian faith. They're like, well, if there's an evil spirit in my house, there is, uh, there's a way I can get rid of them by putting up like the, a cross or maybe pictures of Jesus. Now, while that may be well and good for your own faith, it won't do anything about the spirit. It might enrage the spirit depending on the spirit, but it is nothing without energy. Um a Bible, for example, is actually a pretty good source of energy. It would probably do more good than just a picture of Jesus or a cross because it has so much belief by so many people who they go to church, you know, people, they read the Bible, they call upon the Bible and use of the prayers. And usually when people get a Bible, like say from a church, it has already been prayed over, it has been blessed, it has been used. So therefore it has energy maintained in it. So if you were to do anything, usually a Bible will overcome human negative spirits. When it comes to a demon though, um, it will take more than just prayers from a Bible. And usually when you read prayers from a Bible, you you have to put your energy into it. You have to put your intent into it. You can't just say the words and expect it, you know, to change things. You actually have to feel in your heart and soul the words you're saying and mean them and actually assert yourself. I am going to show you how to properly give an object enough energy to actually provide blessings for you or protection for you. So one thing I have, for example, is the Ankh. Uh, it's an ancient Egyptian symbol for life. It's also known as the key of life because it looks like a key. It has been used in the ancient Egyptian religion and uh, a lot of ancient Egyptian magic, Heka. Uh, it's got uh, hieroglyphics on it. Now, I don't know what all of these mean. I know there are symbols of the Ankh on both sides of the arms of the Ankh, so that means life. Um, so I'm guessing that means from beginning to end. Um, I don't really know what any of the other hieroglyphics mean. I do not understand hieroglyphics. But uh, it really shouldn't matter. This might be like prayers or blessings. Um, there's the Eye of Horus, which means truth. Um, I think there's a symbol of Thoth, the ancient scribe. Other than that, I don't see anything that I recognize. So uh, these might have blessings and uh you know, uh, protection in these symbols that you see here, but I'm not really sure. But that being said, there's also other ways that you can um, energize an object. One mere way of energizing an object is to just merely pray over it. Now, I don't have a prayer to, say, the goddess Isis, because usually I see her as, like, one of the mother goddesses that I call upon, but I can easily call upon her energy to energize this. So, um, uh, get into a relaxed position. Goddess Isis, I ask you to please protect me and guide me through life. And please, with your magic, bless this here Ankh with your powerful energy. 
and give it the strength to provide protection against evil and all things of a wicked nature. Please energize this and allow me to energize with my own energy this Ankh in the name of great positive power and protective energy. Thank you. Blessed be. Now, I can tell this is energized because I feel vibrations in my hands. And usually when I hold an object and I pray over it, I will start to feel that energetic vibration like I showed you guys in the video on how to feel energy. I showed you guys how to exteriorize the energy just going down your arms and filling an object. So um, it's already starting to feel a little heavier too. And it's like dense with energy. That is one way. Another way is by using um, blessed or charged incense or smudging. Now, great things to smudge with. Of course, blessed incense is basically just charged incense. It's basically incense that has been filled with a particular type of energy. And that energy will be given off once it has been lit, the smoke. Even though the smoke may dissipate, the energy will not. So you basically take it and immerse it in the smoke all over from top to bottom. As much as you can, just let the smoke envelop it. That is a great way of getting the energy to cling to it. Another way is um, different smudging herbs. Uh, sage is a great one, uh, especially if it's been charged with your energy while burning. Uh, Palo Santo, which is great for um, emitting positive and protective energy. Cedar. Cedar has been known many years not only to get rid of like insects, it's a natural pesticide, but it also has been used for clearing a space of negative energy. Um, sweet grass. Sweet grass has been known to clear negative energy and to energize a space with positivity. So herbs such as that, and there's probably many other herbs that you can use. You just got to do your research. But those are just to name a few. Uh, you can energize an object through crystal use as well. Another way that you can energize an object is by placing it on such as a quartz crystal, especially if the quartz crystal has been energized with your energy or maybe prayed over. You just place it on the crystal and leave it. Just merely touching the crystal will transfer the energy to it Usually, you can do it for a few hours. If you want to leave it for a whole day, it's totally up to you. But this is a great way of actually getting the energy to the object that you want. Now, keep in mind that crystals, if they've been used before, it's always good to cleanse them with sage or um, one of the herbs that I uh, just said. It's good to clear these out to make sure that no negative energy has clung to them. So you want to make sure that it's totally clear of the energy and you know what energy it holds. Just place it on top. You can also do that with any object, really, a, a cross or um, maybe a piece of jewelry that you want to energize, whatever you want. Obviously, I can't wear this, you know, I, I mean, I guess I could attach a string to it, but honestly, it's quite big to use as a necklace, so I just hang it up um, there are nails in the ceiling that I just hang this up with and um, just having it over me while I sleep you know protects and energizes the area now if I were um, to feel threatened by a negative spiritual force or maybe um, the threat of a curse or a hex that has been placed on me then of course I would bring this out and you know I'd hold it close to me and I just pray over it further energizing this item. Um, my recommendation would be every month or so, just give it a re-energize and cleanse it. So basically, um, you know, maybe just immerse it in some sage smoke. Yeah, and um, 
that should give it some clearance and then just uh, pray over it one more time just to reset and reimburse the energy um, and just keep it fresh. There's another way that I have done before and it's actually a great recipe for many different kinds of cleansings. You can cleanse your altar with it, you can cleanse mirrors with it. It's a mixture that I learned actually from a documentary about you know hauntings. It's a, apparently a Native American uh, ritual where they use um, natural water. Uh, my recommendation would be filtered or distilled water. Uh, but if you have like a lake or a stream or maybe rainwater could also work. Use it. Um, lemon juice, just cut a small lemon in half and just wring it out into the cup. And um, sea salt or Himalayan salt, because those are usually the most purest forms of salt. While uh, usually table salt has been dyed and bleached to look white. So uh, you want to get it as fresh as possible. And it's usually about like a small handful into uh, a cup. And you want to mix that together and then you want to hold it in your hand and pray over it and give it energy. That way it is energized, blessed water. Some people even prefer moon water. It's basically uh, fresh water that has been left out in the moonlight. But it's totally up to you. And what you do is you basically take like a a washcloth or maybe just a piece of paper towel you lightly you know put it in the water and you uh, you wring it out and you lightly just go over it you immerse the object in it as much as you can back and forth top to bottom you just wash it and this will allow the object such as the onk to have this protective energy around it so those are just the many different types of ways that you can energize an object to where it will actually provide protection. I am not saying in any way, shape, or form that just because you do this, it will guarantee that the negative spirit will leave. But it will at least give you some protection if you have an, uh, a negative spirit, uh, whether it's a human spirit or a demonic entity. Demonic entities, though, will usually take a lot more power and a lot more energy to fight off. Now, I'm going to save um, the topic of demonic spirits for another episode, but I at least want to show you guys how to properly energize objects, because if you do not, then they are merely just objects. They may have a little bit of vibrational energy, but it won't be enough to even remotely get rid of a spirit if you don't want it in your house. Hanging up symbols of um, religions you follow or your faith, things you believe in, it's all well and good and it makes you feel good inside your home, doesn't it? Like I have like something like this, I have crystals, um, if you see behind me I have shelves full of statues of gods and spirits and all kinds of other stuff. It makes me feel good in my living space. But it is not enough unless you have provided it with some sort of energy. Otherwise, they're just mere decorations. Now, I've prayed over quite a few of those, so I know the energy they have, and I know they have energy inside them. But if I were to say, because I bought this at a spiritual store not long ago. Say I just bought this, and I'm like, I feel an evil spirit, I'm going to buy this for protection. So I take it home from the store, and I just hang it up. I'm most likely going to have, still have disturbances from the spirit. And if it goes away, seemingly, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay away forever. So, therefore... It's useless unless I provide it with the necessary energy to actually give it some fighting power. 
Spirits are repelled by vibrational energy. See, that's why whenever you assert yourself to an energy and you say you want to take your house back and you really, you know, say it loud and you shout it, you are providing a stronger energy that's trying to push the spirit out, out of the house. So if I were to actually try and get rid of a spirit using this now that I have the energy with it, I would definitely say, in the name of Isis, I repel you from this home. You must leave this house. It is not yours. You are dead. I am alive. This is my property now. I command you, in the name of Isis, to leave this home. And that, in turn, will charge this with even further energy. It doesn't mean it's going to guarantee that the spirit is going to leave, but it will at least give you a fighting chance. If I hope you guys get what I'm saying. Um, so, just to sum things up. A mere object, spiritual or not, is not enough. It, this may have symbols in it, but I don't know what they mean. I don't know if this is a spell, or if it's trying to say something, or it's trying to say what this is. I don't know. Now, if you make something yourself, and you etch symbols that you know are powerful in it, that's all well and good. Just give it a little oomph power. You don't know who made this, and you don't know what energy they were feeling when they made it. So you just want to make sure that you know what you're getting. So that being said, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please put it down below. And uh, don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my new videos. And uh, feel free to subscribe and share this with as many people as you can, please. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, everyone.